Drink poison. The human body can adapt to some poisons and stop reacting to them with symptoms of poisoning. Their effects may not manifest, no nausea or dizziness. However, the increased strain on the organs still has negative consequences, which accumulate and can lead to early death. For example, nicotine in cigarettes is a weak poison, which a person gradually becomes accustomed. Nicotine slowly but surely destroys the body. Its rap sheet includes arterial hypertension and other heart diseases, oral diseases, skin conditions, asthma, and so on. In fact, getting used to poisons is not training the body, but rather the loss of the body's productive reflexes. So, while taking poisons, one can live for a long time, but poorly. You can't even imagine how many parasites can inhabit your body. Potentially, you're a five-star hotel for these creatures. Without fatal consequences, there can be up to 70 species of parasites in your organism. That's 15,000 large individuals and over a million microorganisms. There can be around 500 roundworms alone, with a total length of about 160 yards. And remember, they're constantly reproducing. For instance, a tapeworm can release up to a million eggs in the environment each day. But here's the good news. Not all your organs will suffer from unwelcome guests. For example, the chemical composition and enzymes in the thyroid and pancreas aren't suitable for parasite habitation. And in the duodenum, there's only one resident. It can reach up to 39 feet in length, occupying up to 10% of the entire organ. So don't forget to wash your hands. What to do if you get bitten by a malaria mosquito? Malaria claims the lives of 600,000 people every year. If within two weeks after the bite, you don't feel fever or headaches, don't rush to rejoice. The incubation period of the disease can last up to three years. But when malaria manifests, it can bring your life to the grave within 24 hours. Quinine is most commonly used to treat malaria. It's an alkaloid found in the bark of the cinchona tree with a strong, bitter taste. While it treats malaria, it can also cause ringing in the ears, vomiting, and insomnia. And in doses over 0.3 ounces, this medication can lead to a fatal outcome. Perhaps you should reconsider flying to Africa? Have you ever thought about it? Your body is made up of 99 and 3 fourths percent empty space between atoms. If the nucleus of an atom were the size of the Earth, electrons would be located at a greater distance than Neptune. If you remove all the empty spaces, humanity would fit into a single grain of sugar. So when someone says they feel empty inside, they're not joking. But then why don't we pass through walls? An atom is like a fan. When it's on, it seems like the blades are everywhere at once. The same goes for electrons in an atom. To pass through a wall, electrons from different atoms would need to momentarily occupy the same space, which is impossible. And we don't disintegrate, because atoms are held together by nuclear binding forces. Surprised? You haven't heard the next fact yet. This is the most terrible disease on the planet. Imagine your muscles and tendons slowly turning into bones, and you can't move. This is how the disease of the second skeleton works. No more than 1,000 people in the world suffer from this rare genetic disease. Due to a mutation in the ACVR1 gene, the body produces an enormous amount of bone protein, enough to turn muscle into bone within a few months. The disease is incurable. It entombs a person in a coffin of their bones. The person cannot move, eat, or even breathe. Don't be afraid. There's a way to check for the disease. If you were born with straight big toes, you are most likely not at risk. Write in the comments if you know about such a disease. If it's you, gurgle three times. Now wave your fin. Okay, spin around. Do a backflip. Yes, now I can see that it's definitely you. Toby, bad boy, bad. Put the aquarium back. Whoops.
Arnold, hold your breath. You'll die if you inhale gastric juices. We have seven seconds to pump out all the acids from the stomach while you're moving through the esophagus. Did you just black out? Just like a real piranha. When they're in a shoal, they can easily gut a whole cow in just 10 minutes. But the moment the piranha is alone, it faints from the slightest rustling. Fish need a lot of fresh water. Therefore, it will slam all four liters of the stomach with it. Here. Have a snack, Toby's favorite treat. But be careful with the teeth. A piranha bite is stronger than any other creature on Earth, even including dinosaurs. The last thing you'd want right now is a hole in your stomach. Actually, I have a plan. Toby, open your mouth and try to push Arnold out. Arnold, you go swim to the exit. Come on, guys, do it together. Arnold, you seem to have confused the entrance with the exit. Turn off your Google Maps and start crawling. Toby, you keep trying to push him out. You won't be able to get out of there dry. Now, where did I put my 5-liter enema bag? Oh, here it is. That's better. Now you just have to swim for about 4 meters. Crikey, the things you've been putting in your mouth. I haven't seen a Tamagotchi since the 90s. The water's almost finished. Paddle to the light. I planned a slightly different experiment, but this one turned out to be good too. Right, Arnold? I've always wondered, how many people can the train eater swallow at once? Some information. The train eater is a character from within the secret SCP organization archives, which keep records and descriptions of various anomalous phenomena on Earth. At the moment, there are more than 5,000 entries. The result of the experiment, 37 people at a time. Arnold, pack your bags. It's time to get out of here before you get dissolved by train eater's stomach acid. Just jumping out of a train at high speed is a bad idea. But you're not on the train. You're in the stomach. Let's get the gag reflex going and get you out of here. Hint, Arnold, try tickling the seats. Like this life hack, how to get out of train eater. And now, how to get back home. I have an idea. What if we make a train out of you, Arnie? Railroads are the second most popular mode of transport in the world. The U.S. has the longest railroad track on Earth. Meet train old. Honestly, you look creepy. Not like dear Thomas the Tank Engine. If you imagine that all trains had human faces, I think at high speed their eyes would be cracked. Hurry, Arnold! At night, you can be attacked by the monster train Choo Choo Charles. The protagonist of the horror game of the same name is a monster that appeared mysteriously from the mines where they were digging too deep. It feeds on animals there's a legend that this monster has been living for millennia. Push those pistons, Arnold! Wow, you weren't even stopped by Mr. Beast with his experiment. As you can see, defeating Choo Choo Charles ain't so easy. Arnold, this road leads straight to the cliff. This is your chance. Make Charles fall down there. All you need to do is slow down. Break! <laughs> So, you decided to eat only spicy food to become like your favorite superhero, the Blazing Surfer. You're in for a hell of a job. Super spicy peppers, mega spicy wasabi chips, KFC wings. Oh, Arnold, I wish you'd be more careful. Capsaicin is responsible for the spiciness in all products. It affects the taste receptors, creating a sensation of burning. This triggers an adrenaline rush, increases heart rate, and raises body temperature. Spicy food satisfies hunger faster and increases energy expenditure, and this contributes to weight loss. But an excess of spicy food can provoke gastritis. Spicy food doesn't cause stomach diseases. The cause is harmful bacteria that enter the body with raw food products. If the illness isn't progressing, consuming spicy food can even help prevent the spread of bacteria. But remember, if spicy food causes discomfort, minimize its consumption. Keep smiling, Arnold. After all, spicy dishes contribute to the release of the happiness hormone. After coming into contact with the pepper, under no circumstances should you rub your eyes. You'll get a mucous membrane burn.
and don't attempt to wash it down with water, as this will actually intensify the burning sensation. Milk can help. The citric acid present in milk, lemon, or orange can wash away capsaicin from the receptors and provide relief. Come on, Arnold, you can do it! Your idol is watching you! That's it! Looks like someone had some fun last night. And something tells me your brain is probably just as much of a mess as this room. You really don't remember anything at all. Arnold, could it really be? Last night, did you finally become a real man? Congratulations, Arnold. This is your first alcohol intoxication. Hmm. Now, where's your tooth? Anything ring a bell? Nothing? No? Arnold, you didn't know this, but drinking too much leads to unnecessary aggression. And you certainly paid a price for that. Ooh, you found a solution. Time to take aspirin. Oh, wait, no. You forgot to restock your first aid kit. But really, Arnold, all these troubles are just in your head. Mineral water is a miraculous thing. You're dehydrated. Just need to replenish the missing water from your body. What's with the jacuzzi? I totally understand if you want to quit drinking after last night, but not water. You didn't think it'd be that easy to escape your hangover, did you? Someone call Spielberg. We have a plot for a new Jaws. What is it, Arnold? Are you Don't calling an ambulance? Yet. Ah, you decided to recharge your strength with delicious pizza. But you forgot about one thing. Booze breath. These are the decay products of ethanol that appear in the body after the liver has taken over its processing. One of them, acetic acid, has a particularly nasty smell. Hey Arnold, you sure you still want to sleep after eating? Sadly, you can forget about sleep. Cerebellar functions are impaired after alcohol intake. As soon as you close your eyes, the cerebellum ceases to have enough data for orientation in space and starts transmitting broken data to the cerebral cortex. Say hello to bed spins. Poor Arnold. It's a pity just to look at you. Let me give you one piece of advice. Right now, a cup of hot tea will save you. Wrap yourself in a warm blanket and fall asleep so soundly that no prince can possibly wake you up with his kiss. Arnold, I told you it would help. Well, I congratulate you on your second birthday. Don't forget, Arnold, behind every mask of joy lies some seriously nasty things. Come on, you did this one to yourself. See you next time, Arnold, when we hope you'll finally have your head screwed on right. Seven hours later. Hey, I see the late night beer bash is a big success. But don't forget, in the morning, you got a conference of below 60 IQ YouTubers. And if you're late, your career is toast. There's no time for the toilet. You gotta hold it, buddy. The bladder comfortably holds 150 to 200 milliliters of fluid, but after 400 to 500 milliliters, you'll feel some pressure. You must have drunk a lot. He looks like the boss is in a bad mood, and for sure he ain't gonna let anyone take bathroom breaks. Fluid is absorbed into the kidneys, then descends through the ureter into the bladder. You're probably feeling a bit stressed, Arno, because now you got to hold the pee in with your muscles. I recommend you don't laugh, Arnold, or sneeze, or cough. Anything like that weakens the muscles, and you might start leaking. Hooray! Break time! You're saved! The average person goes tinkle six to eight times a day. Ooh, no luck there, Arnold. In ancient times, rules of decency allowed people to go wee-wee in public, and the division of toilets into men's and ladies only occurred in 1792. Okay, break's over, buddy. Now it's your turn to give your presentation. 
if you hold it in for a long time, the bladder walls can stretch, so you can hold even more PP. But this can be dangerous. Bacteria and acids in your urine can crawl back up into your kidneys, causing cystitis and pyelonephritis. It seems, Arnold, that everyone approves of your dissatisfaction with company policy. Come on, Arnold. I know you can hold it a little longer. Just 50 more talks and then you're free. Well, that's it. Time to go home. And Arnold, I advise you not to make any sudden movements. If your bladder is that full, it could pop. Yay, you're almost home. Now we just have to get through the morning rush hour. Move slowly. Oh no, it seems your neighbor's coming, Arnold. You know, the guy who likes to give everyone a big hug when they meet. 